Is there any way to see me without seeing my shade, my complexion, my rich dark brown skin tone? Some would say dark as night, others would say black as tar. But my personal favorite saying is that I'm black black, like black. <laughs> no matter where I go or what I do, I can't escape my complexion. Dance is my passion. I grew up teaching myself choreography from hip hop music videos and performing them at high school and elementary school assemblies. I also spent the majority of my childhood dancing with my family, learning traditional Ghanaian dance. Dance has been a part of my life, my whole life. But I didn't fall head over heels in love with it until university. Dance teams and competitions, they filled all of my spare time. And then after my third year, I decided to drop out to pursue it full time. A voice just told me to go. And so, since I've started, I haven't stopped. And I have been engulfed in the dance industry for 12 years. It's a long time. And from that, from those 12 years, my career has taken me to Mexico, China, Ghana, Nigeria, US and the UK. I have performed for presidents and dignitaries and I've also performed alongside Rihanna, Drake, French Montana and Arcade Fire to name a few. I have had some spectacular moments in my career but the reality of my shade has been an obstacle throughout it. I started my career in the commercial dance scene. That means I worked on movies, music videos, and stage shows. Auditions would resemble a cattle call of dancers, all dressing similar, gunning for a job. You would learn the choreography, perform it at 1,000%, and they would shuffle around variations to find the dynamic that works. A standard booking dynamic is three white girls, blonde brunette redhead, one Asian or Spanish, and one black girl. All the black women were out for one spot, and that pendulum rarely went in favor of someone of darker complexion. Just like me. Casting directors want to see a cohesiveness amongst the group and not a difference. So when you are someone of darker complexion amongst lighter individuals, you will stand out. And so, the calls stopped coming. It didn't matter how well I danced, how well I mastered my craft, I would always come second place to my shade. People saw my shade first and my talent second, so I made a choice. Being good was not enough. I had to be amazing, extraordinary, phenomenal, one of a kind, just to rise above my shade. I had to perform at a higher level than everyone else, just to get a seat at the table. It didn't matter how much I hone my craft and my talent, the calls stopped coming. I was left to question my shade and my talent. I couldn't escape my complexion. So there's a term that describes what I'm going through. It's called shadism. Shadism is the spectrum of privilege that exists within a race. The preferential treatment of lighter individuals generally over darker complexions. This is a term first coined by Alice Walker, author of The Color Purple and social activist. Now, shadism is a global issue and it is not restricted to the black community. These effects are prevalent in communities of color all across the world. In India, society reinforces fair skin beauty standards because they will boost marital status and job eligibility. Two thirds of beauty products in India are geared towards skin lightening. In Brazil, if you are of African descent, you are encouraged to lighten your bloodline to give your family a better future. In Jamaica, it has actually become trendy to bleach your skin because of a prominent dance hall artist named Vibes Cartel who decided that he would release a line, a bleaching line called Cake Soap and endorse it by becoming 12 shades lighter overnight. Now, these issues are not restricted to these communities alone. These issues are present in the Philippines, 
US, UK, Canada, Asia, South Asia, Latin America, all over Africa, as well as the Caribbean, it all distills down to the same message. If you are of darker complexion, you are lesser than your light-skinned counterparts. Shadism stems from the history of colonialism and slavery, when mostly white-skinned Europeans came and exerted their control over the diverse populations of this world. They planted a seed, and that seed said that all of those that looked like them were preferred. That seed is present and has formed its deep roots into our collective consciousness. It has been passed down from generation to generation over 300 years. That seed is present every time somebody chooses to bleach their skin, cast only light-skinned females in leading roles, and it also exists in dark-skinned grandmothers that favor their light-skinned grandchildren because they won't have to go through the same hardships that they have faced. And it also is present in the dance community. Like when I was told that I was too dark for a music video amongst brown skin black women. Black black was too black. Now, there is nobody to hold your hand and remind you that you are enough. That, in fact, is the most insidious part of shadism. It saps your confidence and makes you believe that you are terrible at something that you are actually quite amazing at, like just being you. The dance world reminded me that I wasn't enough. And for a little bit of time, I believed it. But I still wanted to dance. So I started creating, experimenting. I decided that I would start training in traditional West African again. I wanted to see, I spent years actually, figuring out whether or not I could actually bring together my knowledge of commercial and traditional. I fused contemporary and traditional West African with urban, modern, Latin, and Caribbean styles. I created my own version of Afrofusion. A form that simultaneously brings me together with my heritage and those I get to work with. My heritage, my history, and my ancestors, bringing us all into a modern space. Now this form unbeknownst to me, was actually going to be a part of the resurgence of Afrobeat music worldwide. Other people were stepping out of their traditional worlds for this new African inspiration that was coming up. The music meeting the movement would mean that I would become a trailblazer in Canada. Who knew? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I started getting called and casted again. All of a sudden, my phone started ringing and my shade was never an issue. I was cast to work with French Montana, Arcade Fire, Rihanna, and Drake only after I had done Afrofusion. This form allowed me to create a community that is headed by my two companies, a space that allows me to create space for us, for the people that looked and danced or danced like me. Now, I still couldn't escape my complexion. And to be honest, I really didn't want to. But finally, finally, it was bringing me new opportunities. And then I started questioning. I started wondering how dance could explore fracture present in our society, in our separation, the root of shadism itself. I realized that you know, sometime long ago, before the impact of colonial powers, shadism didn't exist. I wanted to explore how this narrative of light skin being better became our default. I researched a plethora of videos, articles, documentaries, all speaking on this topic. And I realized maybe a topic like this needed a different approach. Maybe something that is so deeply ingrained in our bodies, needs to not be explored with words, but through movement itself. 
And so, Shades, a dance theater show was born. Shades begins as a celebration of melanated beings of all different shades, of all different shades, exploring themselves. But all members are unified. But what happens when that unity becomes threatened by outside forces? Who do we become? What choices do we make? And who do we gravitate towards? This show explores this topic through seven individuals brave enough to tell their stories. We explored this as a creator, before we even explored this, as a creator, I had to make space to listen to their lived experiences. By bridging dance and theater together, we were able to explore these stories as a series of choices and reactions. We explored love, admiration, temptation, revenge, protection, power, and what would drive somebody to bleach their skin. Now, one of the things that I realized was that in listening to everybody's story, it gave me the opportunity to realize that across the spectrum of shades, that there were many people that had similar situations, similar experiences to my own. There, even though we were divided, there was a unity that brought us together based on those experiences. Shadism wasn't just a story, it was a messenger. It was the retelling of our truths and experiences played out over centuries, reminding us that the truth that we are seeking is in our past. By bringing dance and dance through movement and intention together, we were able to bring the audience in on the experience. They were able to actively fill in the blanks with their own narrative because the show was performed predominantly in silence. Your own lived experiences and defaults narrate the show. Shades has been one of the most remarkable and difficult <laughs> experiences of my life. But it wasn't just me. I had mentors along the way. But most importantly, I had my ancestors. They are an energetic force that root me in my past and guide me towards the future. They reminded me and encouraged me to demand more of myself and those around me. Spirits whose hindsight offer wisdom to the work that I create. These spirits experience a world without shadism. And they encourage me to see this world past my own defaults. Shadism is about the default preferences that we are born into. And I question how we can break this generational cycle if we don't question those same defaults. In a city like Toronto, one of the most diverse in the world, how equipped are we to have a conversation with a mixed race four-year-old that wants to be as white as her mother? These children that are being born will not resemble their parents or even their siblings. These children will have prejudice and privilege relative to them. Now we can blame slavery, colonialism, corporations, but the way we choose to treat the people around us is up to us. So the next time you see something beautiful, ask why or why not. Question those defaults. So what did you see when you saw my dark skin? Do you see power, disadvantage, beauty, a history of oppression, or a future of possibilities? Thank you.